In today's video, I'll finish Typhus from the Death Guard, a project that I started almost six months ago. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. Some of you guys might remember that I started painting the green armor of Typhus almost half a year ago with the goal to make him full of color and saturation unlike my other Death Guard models. A lot of you liked the result quite a bit both here and on Instagram and I really wanted to finish him in the next video back then. But then things happened, I started new projects, I wanted to try out new techniques and Typhus was just sitting there. Occasionally I caught him looking at me with sad helmet lenses and sometimes I heard a little bit of melancholy buzzing but I just ignored him. In the meantime I finished all my other projects and today I will finish him as well in the last video of the year to start with a clean slate. Because of course it's pretty hard to start something clean with Typhus around. So if you are interested in how to do a really sick looking typhus, several new recipes for non-metallics, how I painted the little god feasting on his belly to be both cute and disgusting, the white helmet and all the bone elements, the various disgusting things on his base and many things more, then let's make Grandfather Nurgle proud and let's get started. After I was finished with the green armor, I didn't abandon him immediately. I still finished the trim on his armor first, but the other bronze elements, the blade of his scythe, I only finished much later, so this gives me an opportunity to show you two different recipes of bronze color. For the trim, my main goal was to make it quite saturated compared to my previous attempts of non-metallic metal and to match the light direction I used for the green armor. Back then, I decided that the light would be hitting him from the top and the left, so I applied the same approach on everything else as well and especially the non-metallics. The thinking process was that I would start from a red and transition into orange, avoiding colors containing white as long as I can to keep the saturation up. I used the normal scale 75 range for this instead of the more saturated artist range, simply because I had a tried and true recipe which went from whole red to Kalahari orange to Mars orange to mere yellow and finally white sands. For the site, I'll use completely different colors for an even better result, I think. Since the trim is mostly quite narrow, there is not much room for extra light reflections, so it is mostly about placing edge highlights correctly. With the first couple of darker colors, I edge highlighted everything everywhere, but going up in brightness, I started to be more deliberate in where I put the edge highlights. For example, where the trim had two edges, one on the left towards the light and one on the right facing away from the light, I would only edge highlight the left one. You can see this quite well on its color, for example. Also, with the brighter colors, I concentrated my efforts mostly at the upper body only and finally with the brightest colors only around his head and the raised arm. Another trick that I used here was to not highlight the whole edge when I was getting to the brighter colors. One way to layer on edge highlights while maintaining contrast is to do the darker colors slightly thicker and then come in with a thinner line with a brighter color. But if you can't make it any thinner, you can also do a thin partial highlight and a couple of dots as transition, so the previous color will still be visible. After I was done with the trim, I abandoned poor Typhus for a couple of months to work on other projects. In fact, so much time has passed that even my camera setup changed, so you might notice that the light and the angle is a little bit different from now on. When I came back, I realized that previously I didn't paint the scythe, even though I wanted it to be at least partially bronze as well. When I looked at the bronze trim, I was also slightly underwhelmed by the saturation, I felt like I could do better there. So instead of the previous colors, I turned to the artist range of scale 75, the same that I also used for the green armor. The overall idea behind the recipe is the same, from red to orange to yellow and finally white, but I was hoping that I would be able to get a more colorful end result. 
Also, this time I had a much bigger surface to deal with, so I had to make a couple of decisions before starting. First of all, I decided that only the top half of the side will be bronze, so I divided the blade along the middle line vertically. Then I also decided that I would go for some really simple transitions on the bronze part, going brighter towards the tip of the blade, for example, going the opposite way on the lip that is sticking out, and brightening only the middle parts with the three smaller blades. So nothing fancy, but creating contrast and maintaining the color saturation as much as possible. The nice thing about Scale 75 colors is that they're extremely good at layering. They just naturally blend into each other more than any other range I've worked with. Since I used a lot of colors, there are a lot of steps in the transitions, giving the impression that they are smooth even without glazing by brush or airbrush. But I also help this along a bit by applying small scratches along the transitions, which make the blade look more worn and interesting, but they also help blending the transitions together. A blurry, scratchy line between colors is less noticeable to the eye than a completely straight and neat line. Personally, I like the bronze I did on the blade way more than on the trim, and I think it actually shows a bit of progress I made in my non-metallics over the couple of months between the two painting sessions. But you guys can tell me in the comments which one do you like more. For the rest of the metal elements, I was also trying out new recipes, because it's super easy to just use what you are already used to, but then you will never progress as a painter, and sometimes you just have to go off the beaten path. I needed something that contrasted nicely with both the armor and the bronze elements, and my first idea was that I would just go with the usual grays, but that sounded a bit boring, so my next thought was maybe blue? But then I remember that at some point I saw someone do really cool non-metallics with greens on YouTube, and that sounded fun, so I just went with it. Initially, I was a bit apprehensive about it, to be honest, since the armor was green already, but I decided to simply pull the plug and repaint if it went sideways. So I started with a green grey, transitioning into pastel green and finishing with vanilla white. The idea was very similar to how I did the bronze before. On the cutting edge of the blade I created my main reflection adjacent to where the bronze part of the blade was the darkest for contrast. Everywhere else, like for example on the generator unit on the side, I created a simple one-way transition from one edge to the other. Where I didn't have space for transitions, I focused on the edge highlights. Just like with the bronze, I also added lots of small scratches and imperfections to make everything look more worn, but also to hide the transitions. These colors blended a little less naturally than the ones I used for the bronze, so occasionally I added a thin glaze with the highlight color to smooth everything out.
the end, the result is a nice bluish metal despite the green colors I used. I'll try to remember this recipe for the future since it's quite easy but looks really nice. And with that I was mostly done with all the metals except some verdigris and rust that I'm going to apply at the very end. So let's move on to painting the Nurgling that is happily munching away at something on his stomach that we probably shouldn't think about too hard. I wanted this little guy to contrast with the rest of the model but at the same time also wanted him to fit into the color scheme so I had the genius idea to start from a blue and turn it into green by the highlights. I simply started with Prussian blue and added more and more vanilla yellow layering it up on a smaller and smaller surface on the cute little folds of flesh that he has. Once again the transitions didn't really blend well so I used some glazes to smooth them out. The yellow brightened up the original blue, slowly turning it into green, and the blue shadows, the greenish midtones, and the yellow highlights make him look really saturated and colorful. Then I added some red eyes with a white dot in the middle, which literally sparkle with delight. Who wouldn't want to have a cute pet like that, right? One of the things that makes Typhus Typhus is the iconic white helmet, and the contrast between the green and the bronze and all the disgusting stuff around with this pure white on him is just fantastic design, so I had to get this right. And it was actually easier than I thought. I used off-white from the artist range of scale 75 and usually you don't want to start anywhere near white when you want to paint white, but despite the name this is more like a beige color with pretty good coverage actually. The end result already looks more or less white, but it lacked any kind of contrast, so I used the green-gray I already had on the wet palette from the steel non-metallic metal to blackline the recesses. Then I also painted in the eyes with some fluorescent red and a white line in the middle. And finally I did some edge highlights with pure white to set it as white but also to hide some of the smudges I made with the black lining. And it looks pretty good I would say, it definitely stands out and draws your eye towards the head of the model as it should. The two last remaining big elements on the model were the hilt of the side which is prominent because of the position that it's in and all the bone bits. If I want to paint saturated leather, I usually turn to Doomball Brown from Citadel and that is what I did here as well. I gave the whole hilt an overbrush with this color, concentrating on the upper part the most where the light would hit and leaving the very bottom fully dark. Then I added first Cadian Flash and then Kisla Flash for the highlights. This part of the model is very nicely sculpted, so as long as I didn't apply too much pressure, I could just run my brush over the hilt, highlighting the edges of the leather wrapping. And by reducing the highlights more and more towards the top of the curve on the hilt, I tried to emphasize the light hitting a cylindrical shape. I also added small scratches here and there and applied a thin glaze of Doombull Brown in the end to integrate everything together. The bone elements were even easier, I wanted these to be darker at the base and getting lighter towards the tip. So I started with a burnt umber, adding more and more buff and finally white, layering it towards the point or top of whatever I was painting. 
The white paint desaturates the colors quite nicely, which suited me for the most part, but in the end I also felt like I needed a little bit more color, at least around the base of the horns. So I used some thin down skeleton horde contrast to bring a bit of yellow back into the bones. With that I was mostly done with Typhus except some weathering and it was time to do his base. I had built this base before starting the project from some bits of 3D printed bases, cork and some basing materials. Now I just painted the whole thing dark red over a zenithal prime on a whim and started from there. I would cover up the red mostly in the end but I wanted to have it as a shadow color to remind me that I wanted colors I guess. I mean why not. Everything that was meant to be slimy later received some rough base coat of dark green with some frog green highlights. Later I would add some actual green slime on top of this. For the rocks and the rubble I dry brushed on some dark grey, felt that it was too grey for my liking and switched over to some mud brown which I felt was way more right. Then some highlights of golden brown and ice yellow and it was done. The disgusting spherical things got a coat of Briar Queen chill contrast over the original white zenithal. I used royal purple from Vallejo for the tentacles coming out of the slime with some ice yellow mixed into the purple for highlights. Later I added a layer of gloss varnish to make them look even more slimy. Finally I spread a generous helping of Nurgle's rod around, especially on the green bits, but also coming out of the pipe and a little bit from under his boots. I'm usually not a huge fan of technical paints, but this one is fantastic. It literally looks like someone went to Papa Nurgle and asked him to hold the bottle under his nose for a few minutes. It's as disgusting as it is beautiful. At this point all I needed to do was to make him a little bit more worn looking with some weathering and that also gave me an excuse to put even more colors on him. For all the bronze parts I added a little bit of aquatic turquoise into the crevices and around the rivets. When it made sense I also pulled it down a bit to make it look like it is seeping down due to gravity. Then I added a tiny amount of deep sky blue inside the turquoise to make it more pronounced and create some contrast. I did the same with the steel elements but using first dark rust then progressively smaller amounts of medium and finally light rust. The holes on the green armor also got a bit of this since the orange contrasts so nicely with the green and because it looked too clean. With that after 6 months I was done and I can end the year with 0 unfinished projects and the end result looks like this.
Thank you very much for watching and please let me know if you like the end result in the comments and as usual please consider giving the video a like and subscribe. May Nurgle's blessings avoid you in the new year and see you in the next one.